4 o'clock rock. I'm Jay Fidel on ThinkTech, and this is our flagship energy show every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Put it on your calendar. Don't forget, be here every week. Uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy, right here on ThinkTech. Today we're going to talk about transformative awards for clean energy. But before we get that, we're going to, we're going to talk about the Negawatt moment with Chelsea Harder of Hawaii Energy. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Jay. How are you? And my co-host, Ray Starling. Hello, Jay. That was a lot about this stuff. Fabulous. What a group. And Sharon Moriwaki is out there in the nether. She's always watching what we're doing. Always. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Everybody in the gallery. If you want to be in our gallery, come around, you know. We have a gallery. You can, you can not only watch, you can be here. The tactile ex, ex, you know, experience. Okay, Chelsea, you have a program you'd like to discuss. And let me make a wild guess. It's building operator certifications am amazing. i right amazing yes yeah. yes we're calling it the essential credential so it's <laughs> i love that <laughs> it's a um it's a, a um credation program through national energy efficiency um certification or council that um we're going to be delivering through uh manoa outreach college uh -huh. it's for building operators maintenance technicians engineers anybody who is in working in facilities and maintaining buildings yeah. it's to build their skills and keep them up to date on efficient equipment so we're going to be offering it it's a seven module course so it's a total of 56 hours but um for the fall semester so that's eight hours per module right so it's Am a right, full right, day right, thursdays sprinkled between september 15th and december 15th okay that's like, like four months course yes serious yes this is serious education. it is serious it's stuff. all about energy and it's all about energy equipment in buildings right energy efficiency specifically what kind of buildings so any sort of large buildings where there's going to be chillers different equipment um, lighting that you have to maintain so it's a very hands-on course taught by different facility or um, different energy professionals in the industry yeah. So um, it is a, an expensive course. It's sixteen hundred dollars per student. However, however, Hawaii Energy sees the value in this and um, is going to be subsidizing fourteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred. Right for Leaving qualified participants. So what's a qualified participant? Um, it's somebody who has experience and is working in Hawaii. Um, on buildings and such as yeah, building operators, maintenance workers, electricians, anybody who can have an impact with this. And training. this would make that individual more valuable to uh, his employer or Absolutely. her employer. Absolutely. Yep. And think? because it's a certification program, they can put those letters after their name as well. You know, the thing about it is that um, this this saves the building money. Absolutely. It also yeah. saves the tenants money to the extent there's a pass through. So, you know, you have it kind of go, going both ways. Right. The tenants and the building, the owner of the building is happy to have somebody qualified in building energy efficiency, and he's more likely to hire that person than a person who, doesn't, who hasn't been through the course. Right, and I would hope that some of the participants would actually take some of these teachings and translate them into their home as well and save energy in sure, their home. Sure, sure. So, I mean, <clears throat> it's, I mean, the, the technology is moving very quickly right and um, these guys have to keep up with that a lot of them have been in these jobs for a long time they may not have continuing engineering education um, this is a good idea to pr provide that for them yeah. absolutely absolutely and so, we usually offer it once per year so how how if you wanted to take part in this what would you need to do um, if anybody wants to apply, you go to hawaiienergy.com and um, go under education and professionals and you're going to be able to, it'll pop up on your screen, the application. Please, ap please apply um, August 31st. Oh. Yeah. That's a week away. It's coming up. Don't fool around. It's a, it's a very and short application process. And, and okay. uh, does it explain online like when the courses will happen? It does, ha yep. Happen? It, yeah. They're every Thursday starting that September 15th, and it'll tell the exact dates. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Okay, my reaction is good idea, good program, 200 bucks helps your career. Good, and hopefully, um, hopefully their um, employers will see the value in it and help to subsidize them further. I'm sure they will. We, we want to build a, a workforce, an engineering force in Hawaii that is experienced and educated in this area. Absolutely. So this is good for everybody. Great. Thank you, Chelsea Harder. Thank you so much, You Jay. came down and made our lives happy today. <laughs> we're so happy we're going to take a break. Thank you, Chelsea. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. <laughs>
Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, and I'm fortunate to be able to host Sustainable Hawaii at thinktechhawaii.com. I hope you'll join in with us every Tuesday from 12 noon to 1 p.m. to see the interesting people we have to share with you their information. Aloha. Aloha, how you doing? Welcome to Ibachi Talk. I'm here, Gordo the Tech Star on Think Tech Hawaii. And I'm here with my good old buddy, Andrew the Security Guy. Hey, everybody, how you doing? Aloha. Good to, have it, good, to, good to have Andrew here in the house. Please join us every Friday from 1 to 1.30 and follow us up on YouTube. And remember, as we say at the end of every show, how, how you, you doing? doing? Aloha, I'm Kawi Lucas, host of Hawaii is my mainland here on Think Tech Hawaii every Friday afternoon at 3 p.m. Start your Pauhana weekend off with the show where I talk to people about issues pertinent to Hawaii. You can see my previous shows at my blog, kawilucas.com, and also on Think Tech's show. Sorry. Aloha, Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green Think Tech Hawaii. I appear every other Monday at 3 in the afternoon. Do not tune in in the morning. My topic is energy efficiency. It sounds dry as heck, but it's not. We're paying $5 billion a year for imported oil. My job is to shave that, shave that, shave that down in homes and buildings while delivering better comfort, better light, better air conditioning, better everything. So if you're interested in your future, you'd better tune in to me. Three o'clock every other Monday, code green, aloha, and thank you very much. You're watching Think Tech Hawaii, meeting people we may not otherwise have met, helping us understand and appreciate the good things about Hawaii. Great content for Hawaii from ThinkTech. Aloha, this is Reg Baker with Business in Hawaii. We're a show that broadcasts every Thursday at two o'clock. We would love to hear from you and you can reach us in several different ways. We have a hotline that you can call in at 415-871-2474 or you can email us at thinktechhawaii.com or you can tweet us at thinktechhi. Looking forward to hearing from you and seeing you on our next show. Aloha. Bingo, we're back. Um, now we have Nicole Brody. She's the executive director, let me say that again, executive director of Kanu Hawaii, which is a really splendid job to have. I like to have your job. If you'd like to have her job, look at kanuhawaii.org. But don't take my job. <laughs> <laughs> So you won this award, this fabulous award. It's on the table. Yes. We should take a, a, a close-up of that award. <laughs> Not too close. But. <laughs> yes, I, I won an award just like this one with um, Kanu Hawaii's name on it. Okay. Um, yeah, for the work that we do on social media and Zippies to inform hundreds of thousands of people across Hawaii about energy efficiency. Very important. So this, is, this was an award presented to you in front of hundreds of people at the Hawaii Energy, uh, 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 Hawaii Clean, Clean Energy Day, Energy Day yes, last by week Governor Ige on the 16th himself. by Governor Ige and Sharon Moriwaki. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's really something. <clears throat> so what was the project? Can you give us a pricey on the project that sure. led to this, this award? Yeah, so Hawaii Energy, with their funds and their vision, they allowed us and requested that we communicate to people, like I said, across the state on energy efficiency, but in a way that's relatable, accessible, and relevant to people. Um, so using local images and local language, just letting people know how they can make adjustments in their home to save energy. So we posted um, over 80 posts on Facebook. We got about 600 views of these posts wow. and 24,000. said the right thing. <laughs> and 24,000 engagements. So people are actually clicking and sharing um, our information. And so it's pretty important that we got 24,000 engagements across the state around energy efficiency. How did you, what, what magic language did you use? <laughs> Pigeon. <laughs> <laughs> um, we just made sure that it just sounded like it was from Hawaii, that it was for Hawaii, by Hawaii. Um, and it really related to people. 
they were able to relate to the information. And like I said, they wanted to share it. And we had this really cute character, Will the Cat. Um, uh, and he's doing fun, cute things and saving energy. And people like that. And we're just setting that baseline of vocabulary and literacy. Yeah, yeah, important. Yeah. Um, but why? Why is it important that people out there, all the Facebook people and whatnot, know about clean energy and energy efficiency? Well, I think, um, as you know, a lot of is changing in the energy world and the energy landscape. And it's changing pretty quickly. And we want to make sure that the people who could benefit most from energy efficiency and conservation, the people really struggling to pay their electric bills, are yeah. not left behind. Yeah. Um, people who cannot upgrade to solar or buy an electric vehicle, that they have the resources and the empowerment to change their consumption and their behavior patterns. And like I said, at the very least, just get that literacy and vocabulary so that they can take that knowledge and share that with other people, either in their office or other people that they live with, um, to kind of just get that conversation started. Do you get feedback from them on how much they saved from a given bill, of which was much too much to a less? Do you Definitely. Get that? And we haven't necessarily gotten numbers, but we've certainly gotten people telling us that they were able to save on their water bills and their electric bills because of the information that we gave them, which we absolutely love to hear. Yeah. We've also heard that people take this information to their community associations and housing associations, as well as um, their workplace. We found that engineers who wanted to upgrade um, their light fixtures, when more of their workplace was educated on the importance of that, they were able to get that project approved faster so because everyone knew it was Chelsea going on. Harner was talking about how the lessons that she gives to the, uh, the building engineers and operators would filter to them at home. Now you're talking about how <laughs> the people at home get these lessons from you and that filters to exactly. their places of employment. Exactly. Hawaii yeah. energy is everywhere. We want to make sure that everyone has this sort of basic knowledge. Could you so repeat that? that? Yeah. <laughs> Hawaii <laughs> energy is everywhere. And this is a good thing. So yeah. that we're teaching people how to conserve and how to save. And like I said, take control and empowerment over their consumption, which I think a lot of people don't realize they have. I think they think their electric bill is what it is, and they can't do anything about it. And we've been able to show them that they can. That's great. So this award means something in the sense that it it, it tells you that the energy world is aware of what you're doing and acknowledges your efforts and the success of your program is pretty good. You must be a, a little bit happy about it. Yes, no, we're thrilled. This was such a huge honor. We really appreciated it. Yeah, good. That was a great meeting last week, too. Yes, it was. Yeah. So tell us uh, just one last thing. Tell us about Kanu. What does Kanu Hawaii do? What kind of other projects do you get involved in to, you know, build resilience into our community? Yeah, so we are um, a local sustainability nonprofit, and so what that means is we work on local food issues as well as um, energy independence, um, civic engagement, and waste reduction. So a lot of different topics and figuring out how people can make small adjustments and changes and commitments in their own life and how we can then come together and lower barriers for everyone else. Um, one of my favorite examples is we were trying to increase local food um, consumption, and so one thing that we worked on was getting EBT, or SNAP benefits, accepted at farmer's markets. What, what is EBT? Um, so that's the food stamps. Oh, okay, okay, sorry. So yeah. if those, yeah, no, if they're accepted at farmer's markets, then allows more people to have access to local food, which can be sometimes expensive. So making sure that these programs, which can be sometimes out of reach for people, we find ways to get them in reach. If I didn't mention it, Connor is a fabulous organization. It's existed for, must be 10 years almost, huh? Getting there. And it, it has reached out into the community in so many ways and done so many good things. So it's great to meet you. I mean, I met you last week. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's uh, great to see you get this award. And uh, yeah. we wish you well in every particular here. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Let's see what Ray has to say about all that. Well, I, was, <laughs> I just wanted to say, you know, Kanu has reached out to uh, people that Hawaii Energy couldn't reach otherwise. It, uh, they had already developed relationships with people and mm. programs that reached out and, and were, were able to uh, get people to come do things. And so this was a natural for Hawaii Energy when it started looking at who's, who's left out of the mix. We, we've got the big buildings taken care of. We're doing all the things for government. But uh, at the end of the day, we realized that we had to touch everybody because everybody uses electricity right. and they can uh, learn a lot about efficiency. So yeah. uh, Kanu has really helped with that end of the, uh, the effort. And I want to make sure I don't leave out Zippies. They also helped us by putting some energy tips on their cakey menus and tray liners and we were able to reach 129,000 
customers across all of Zippy's stores. That's huge. That's huge, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just That's have nice. some energy efficiency on their table while they're enjoying their Zippy's dinner. Well, thank you. Nicole Brody, Executive Director of KanuHawaii.org. Yes. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Aloha! This is Rez McJackal. The University of Hawaii football team under Rolovich is going to kick butt this season. In case you didn't understand me, University of Hawaii football team is going to kick butt under Rolovich this season. So be sure to follow us on Think Tech Hawaii and Hibachi Top. I'll be at every game. And remember, aloha! Aloha, this is Maria Mera, and I'm here to invite you to my bilingual show, Viva Hawaii on Think Tech Hawaii, every other Monday at 3 p.m. We're here to inform, motivate, and entertain you. Join us. Hola, soy María Mera y estoy aquí para invitaros a mi show bilingüe Viva Hawaii en ThinkTech Hawaii cada dos lunes a las 3 de la tarde. Estamos aquí para informaros, motivaros y entreteneros. Apuntaros. Welcome to ThinkTechHawaii.com. This is Johnson Choi, your host. The topic is Asia in Review. We do it on a monthly basis on Thursday at 11 o'clock. Be sure to check the schedule. See you. Hello. I'm Stephen Katz, and I'm the host of Shrink Wrap, which comes to you live every Tuesday at 3 p.m. on thinktechhawaii.com. And then it's repeated again whenever you want if you go to the website. On our show, we will be talking to all different kinds of therapists, psychologists, psychoanalysts, psychiatrists, people who talk about the mind, the brain, and about different ways to find happiness. Um, I myself am a marriage and family therapist in practice here in Hawaii, and I hope you will join us because I've got a lot to learn, you've got a lot to learn, and it's a great ride. Thanks a lot. See you soon. Aloha, my name is Josh Green. I host a show called Healthcare in Hawaii here on ThinkTech. We get together once a week or sometimes uh, twice a month, depends when we're busy, we get together less often, but we love to see you here to talk about the preeminent healthcare issues in our state. Our programs vary very widely. We talk about economics, we talk about healthcare, we talk about social issues on this program. Thanks for joining us. Here's the deal. Um, I'm Jay Fidel, I'm the host of uh, Hawaii, the State of Clean Energy, which is the Energy Policy Forum's program on Wednesday. That's how we call Wednesday Energy Wednesday. We call it Energy Wednesday every Wednesday. <laughs> Are you surprised? Okay, and we, and we try to we get guys like Jim Alberts here from Hawaiian Electric who can tell us what's really going on in energy. We want to be informed. It's so important. It's the most important initiative in our state. <laughs> Clean energy is major, okay? And that's how we cover it on this show. That's the deal. What do you think, Sharon? I think that's great. That's why we're here every Wednesday from 4 to 5, and we hope you all join us so we can hear people like Jim coming on our show and co-host Ray Starley from Hawaii Energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here today. You've seen this. You heard what she said. What do you think? We're back. We're live. We're here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. You're talking about transforming, transformative awards for clean energy. These were uh, awarded at the Hawaii Clean Energy Day program on August 16th last week. Um, and among them, okay, we not only had Kanu Hawaii a minute ago, but we have IFMA. And that stands for the uh, International Facilities Management Association. We have two of the most famous <laughs> members of IFMA right here, uh, uh, Les and Jan uh, Taniyama. Thank you for coming down, you guys. You're Thank welcome. And Thank you've been you walking around like a foot over the ground now for the last week or so with your award, which is here on the table. Yeah. How was it? What kind of experience did you have when you received this award? I thought oh. I saw you smiling. It was an amazing moment. Yeah. We received it from the governor. Yeah. That was something, yeah. And Sharon Moriwaki. And Sharon also, Moriwaki. Yeah. In that order, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, so what was it for? Can you talk about your project that, that uh, you know, yielded this award for you? Yes, basically, uh, we, we together with the University of Hawaii developed a four-year degree program in facilities management. Um, we, Jan and I, as well as the rest of the uh, members and core of IFMA Hawaii, felt there was a little hole in industry that wasn't fulfilled, and that is, as technology grew, as you just alluded to a few minutes ago, the people behind it aren't keeping up. 
So BOC programs that Chelsea talked about is a great program for those operators, but we need the management to keep up with the technologies that are evolving within facilities. Yeah, absolutely. And every time they build a new building, there's so many new technologies that go into it. So you, you have to teach an old horse new tricks, don't you? Well, it's, you know, like the iPhone 6 versus the flip phone, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah there's a little learning curve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So are you dedicated to efficiency or are you talking about all aspects of technology in this program? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. I got my Absolutely. answer. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Jan, how much of what Les said do you agree with? 100%. I thought you'd say that. You could have said 125%, though. <laughs> Ray, how much of it, what he said do you agree with? Well, I've worked with Les before, and uh, he's pretty good at what he does, uh, especially in the efficiency and building operator areas. So I, uh, I believe almost 100% of what he says. You know, we have to build a, uh, a workforce at, at every level, doing everything from construction to building management, which is Akamai about clean energy. We, we have to have a, an entire community transformation and understanding so everybody knows, not only knows, but they're sensitive to it and they're wedded to it and they apply it in their daily jobs. That's what you guys have been doing. Yes. Um, well, he. He designs two million, three million, five million dollar um, systems, and they're all computer operated. Mm -hmm. And the guy with the rag in his back pocket he might not be so savvy on computers, and he might <laughs> just keep things running. You know? just <laughs> might just keep things running because that's what right. his boss says. But so it's, when it's, the boss says, "I want energy efficiency," he doesn't know how to achieve it. Yes, it's an attitudinal thing. So that, that manager or engineer, has to, he has to be a self-starter. He has to come into work every day thinking, how am I going to make things more efficient? Well, I believe, like, on the facility management er level, um, that expertise has to be given a little boost, has to rise. Because uh, how is he going to set that example for the rest of his staff? You know, we have the BOC programs, that's all well and good. But if there isn't enough buy-in at management level, we've got a problem. Yeah, yeah. So um, the Building Managers Association, uh, B BOMA, yes. are they involved with you and NIOP and all those? Uh... BOMA is a staunch uh, supporter of us, along with other organizations like ASHRAE. The ASHRAE is the mm -hmm. engineers that mm -hmm. design air conditioning, and we got even the unions involved with us in collaboration. You need to do that. Yeah. Absolutely. Because if you get them to buy in, then everything gets easier on the other end, yeah. So, so uh, what is the extent of the program right now, and what do you think turned the uh, Energy Policy Forum in your direction? What, what, um, you know, what made them give you the award exactly I think it's because um, what he designs they don't know how to operate after it and as he goes back years later he has to recommission everything all over again to bring back the energy efficiency yeah this way you do it in advance instead this, this yeah. way this you way start out on the right foot we teach them how the right way to begin with in college and I think yeah. it's something like when I was talking with Sharon pri well prior to this, it's that aha moment yeah. when you realize that's right. We want that technical building. We want that intelligent building. We want building automation. But someone has to take care of it. And Jesus, who's training them? Yeah. I mean, are, are they trainable? Or are there 40, 50-year-old people on the eve of retirement? Yeah. Well, you know, people assume that, um, um, you know, somebody who's been in and in around buildings their whole career, they know this by some osmotic process, but they don't. You actually have to teach technology. Absolutely. Yeah. And IPMA Foundation is actually the accrediting body for this program. Ah, interesting. Okay. So there's a direct tie. You know, uh, we brought it to the program and... Um, they have experience with a uh, number of colleges. There were nine prior to the University of Hawaii West as well. Hawaii is number 10. There's only 10 of these baccalaureate degree programs throughout the United States. Is that States. right? 
Do you think they'll come out here and, and join the program from other states? Well, strategically, just like Pearl Harbor, we're in the middle of the Pacific. I think we're ideal for not only the West Coast. But for Asia. Asia. Yes. And by the way, Tokai University is right there on university's oh, that's campus. That's right. They're building a building, aren't they? It's they're fine. actually they're <laughs> operating. Yeah. Yeah. They're already finished it. Yeah. Yes. And they have agreements in place. Yeah. So you're, West Oahu is really coming, coming of age now, huh? Things are happening in yes. West Oahu. I'd like to talk a little bit about what we want to do from now. I mean, Please. You know, uh, we got this wonderful award, and I and Jan, uh, we dedicate that to the volunteers that made it all happen because it's really nice for a volunteer organization to get recognized for the hard work we do. IFMA is a volunteer organization? 100%. That's great. Yeah, and we all have other day jobs, and all time spent is purely after hours and middle of the night and on weekends and it, it, it's pretty amazing. It's a labor of love, I know. It, it, it truly is. But you know, <laughs> going forward, uh, now what? Um, we're, we're now talking come this fall, later this fall, two things are going to happen. We're going to have the SFP program and it's been funded by Ingersoll Rand Foundation. Very nice. And we're hoping to have more contributions from Ingersoll Rand. Uh, so that's really fun. Uh, the other thing we're looking at is developing an organization where we're going to be meeting with the schools, the, the people that bring students from the high schools into the college programs, the counselors, because we need to feed into the program. Yeah. So you want to tell them about it in advance, you want to get them on board early. This makes for a better career. It, it's the same thing with uh, Chelsea Harder's program in the sense that you, you take this course, you are worth some money in the marketplace. Exactly. Uh, you're not only here, but elsewhere, actually, now that I mention it. The other good thing is we, we've done some good educational programs ourselves. So we're teaching today's operators and uh, facility managers on fundamentals and really technical areas of facility management, like um, uh, building automation and control, how to read it, how to even design it, how to modify it. Uh, we're looking at um, solar. We're, we're talking about solar and power quality because all of this technology does affect our grid. But it can be daunting if you don't know about it. It's very daunting. Yeah. It, it's and, and you scary. can't make a mistake because there's a lot of money involved. These investments are not small investments. If you leave them, you know, if you don't make the right analysis, you make a mistake, you're wasting a lot of money. So you have to be trained. And then the real estate sector expects their facility people to understand and know yeah. what to do. Yeah. And, and, and that's pretty spooky. Okay, it's almost time for you to make your summary remarks, Ray. What have we learned today? Where are we going from here? Well, I, I think we've learned that uh, efficiency across the board takes a lot of different people aiming at different things to make it all happen. So you've got people working like Kanu with, uh, with people in residential areas and ap apartments, uh, learning how to be uh, efficient. And then you've got the, the big buildings uh, that IFMA is involved in, in the building off uh, operators course that Chelsea was uh, promoting. It's, a, it's something that has to happen across the board in order to be effective. And, and we're very fortunate to have uh, uh, Les um, and Jan working on this from the higher level, the, the building operators uh, 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 baccalaureate degree. Um, that is sort of the crowning blow or the crowning top of uh, what needs to happen. And uh, Les has taken all the experience that he has uh, and pushed it. And it wouldn't have happened without these two actually making it happen. Uh, it, it's, it's one of those things where there has to be somebody who just won't stop until they get where they want to go. And that's what has happened here. And that's why the award was given to IFMA. But these were the guys leading the charge. A lot of good people at IFMA pushing as well, but it, it took some crazy people to <laughs> say, we're just not going to quit till we get it done. Yeah. And uh, so congratulations. Congratulations, you. you guys. It's transformative, and you are involved in the transformation of Hawaii. How do you feel about that? Fantastic. Yeah. I, think I would really be remiss without saying there's three more crazy people 
as a part of this group that had the guts to uh, join us in our travels. And Charles Lovelace, our president, he, he's um, committed to his job, but also committed to us. Um, we have uh, Don Cano of Stero Air. There, there are people put UV lights in hospitals mm -hmm. so that mm -hmm. we get rid Important. of some of the staff. Yes, yes. Yeah, and we have, Derek. I think you know Derek Sonora? I think I yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a staff supporter. That's right. Derek was uh, part of the effort as well. So. Yes. So. Congratulations. Uh, thank yeah. you, Les. Thank you, Jan. The, the Mr. and Mrs. Ta Taniyama <laughs> <laughs> for coming down, for being involved in this, and congratulations on your award. Thank you. Hello.